So what was the preclinical work that led to the randomized mogamolizumab uh, trial or the MAVRIC trial? Uh, so uh, antibodies, which are proteins that, that can usually bind to certain features on a cell surface, often um, engaging then the immune system, so immune destruction of cancer cells, uh, have been used in oncology treatments for uh, 25 years or so, and the research into these goes back uh, way further. Um, the most, one of the most successful antibodies that we use in routine practice is rituximab, which is targeted to something called CD20, which is a marker, an antigen that's on the surface of most B cells and therefore most B cell lymphomas. And in trying to extrapolate that same idea to T cell lymphomas, investigators initially in Japan identified CCR4 as a marker and antigen on the surface of certain T cells, including um, on the surface of a very difficult to treat lymphoma called uh, adult T cell leukemia lymphoma, or it's an often aggressive lymphoma that comes uh, from an HTLV1 virus. Uh, and uh, this lymphoma is more common in Japan, parts of the world like the Caribbean. So as they developed that antibody, they then looked uh, for other lymphomas that would express CCR4 where that antibody could be a therapeutic target. And they identified mycosis fungoides or Cesare syndrome as two of uh, the more common subtypes of cutaneous T cell lymphoma that where the cancer cells often or routinely express CCR4. So by developing the antibody actually for a similar but different disease, recognizing that the same target of the therapy was present on um, the cells of many patients with cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, that then led to early clinical studies looking at mogamolizumab in cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, mycosis fungoides, and Cesare syndrome specifically. What had to happen for this trial to occur? So the MAVERICK study was a large international randomized study treating patients with cutaneous T-cell lymphoma with either mogamolizumab, which again is an anti-CCR4 antibody, or a standard therapy in this study, it was varinostat, which is an oral medication that's FDA approved in the United States for cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. So for this study uh, to happen, there were initial early studies uh, uh, led by investigators, including at Stanford and MD Anderson, that identified that mogamolizumab was a reasonable therapy for people with cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. And then it really took investigators around the world and the sponsor, uh, Kiowa, to bring everyone together to really do this very large randomized study in a very rare disease. So it was really uh, a worldwide effort uh, of people coming together to try to uh, study and explore this new treatment for cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, both to define how well it works and compare it to an existing standard therapy, in this case, for Inistat. So what did we learn during and after the MAVERICK study, which again was the randomized study of mogamolizumab versus varinostat in patients with cutaneous T-cell lymphoma? So we learned a lot, I think, in terms of, of top-line data or really the, what we call the primary endpoints of the study. We learned that patients who got mogamolizumab uh, were longer progression-free, meaning their disease was controlled longer than patients who got oral varinostat. And in that sense, it was an advance in uh, adding to our treatment tools for patients with cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. So this is a disease where we're always looking for new effective therapies. Um, I think we learned some other things that help us individualize treatment. For instance, we learned that patients with blood involvement uh, uh, or Cesare syndrome uh, had the best responses, and some of those responses were complete, and some of those responses lasted a long time. There were responses in people with skin lesions and lymph node disease, but those responses were a little less frequent. So in addition to understanding overall the activity or the benefits of mogamolizumab, uh, we also uh, learned about maybe how to better select patients or match patients to that therapy. So what's next for mogamolizumab? Well, I think there's a number of things that are being looked at uh, in terms of how we can extend the benefits of this therapy. Some of those are combination studies where we're looking at combining mogamolizumab with other drugs that activate the immune system in different ways to see if we can either create deeper responses, meaning more people getting completely better, nearly completely better. And I think the other thing is trying to use some uh, medications that also um, can stimulate the immune system for the body to make its own immune response 
against the cancer cells to see if we can have some of the remissions really last a long time uh, or be durable. And that's a lot of the current uh, studies that are going on with mogamolizumab.